Hey, hey, family. Welcome back to another Life Talk with the phenomenal Miss James, your host, myself. Thank you all so much for joining me today in another conversation or a listening session. And, you know, I'm going to just talk this one through. Go ahead and get yourself a snack and come on back. You know, really... I have been thinking about a lot of, of experiences that I've been having lately, and I and I know some of us can relate to this, right? You set up some goals, and you decided that, hey, you know what? I'm gonna smash these goals this year, this 2021, right? I know 2020 was a little bit rough for a, or a lot bit rough for a lot of us, and so we've decided that. We're going to reclaim whatever it was that we wanted last year that didn't come through. We're reclaiming that it's going to happen this year, that it's going to manifest for us. We probably wrote these goals down, or if you're like me, I write them down, or you have them in mind. But now what's happening, right? What's happening? What's happening is that as you're beginning to go through the process of setting these plans in motion, right? Because a goal without a plan... Is just a dream. A goal without a plan is just a dream. So now if you really want to see these things come through and manifest, you there's got to be a plan. What's the action plan? And now when you start to put this plan into place, you're realizing that, man, oh man, oh man, like you're starting, you're beginning to get, be met, you're beginning to be met with opposition. You made the appointments and all of a sudden you, you didn't get called or they, they told you they're overbooked or they're, they, you, you, you had a reservation at the gym and, and all of a sudden they tell you they can't accept you anymore or you had an appointment for something else or you applied. If you're like myself, you applied to a graduate program and they're telling you that, hey, you know what? Your master's degree and your bachelor's degree is not enough because the program that you're applying to, you do not have the prerequisites or the most of them. So we're advising that you go ahead and take a, a second bachelor's or get a second master's or get a second bachelor's, then get a ma- then join the master's to then get the doctorate. And you're like, what is going on? Did I study all these years to, to now have to go again and put in another five years before starting the PhD process? And you're thinking to yourself, man, this is crazy. Am I going to Go and and, and take out $80,000, $100,000 in debt just to be promised in seven years or 10 years after the journey again that you're going to be making six figures? No, who's going to do that, right? Who? Well, I mean, I shouldn't say who's going to do that because a lot of us, a lot of people would, but I'm not going to do that. And so I had to respectfully decline on that offer to say, hey, you know what? I've already got a bachelor's and a master's degree. And I'm blessed to be able to say that because I know that may not be the case for some of us. But in a situation like that, where that was my goal, applying to this one program this year, and that was the goal, it's changed now, and being met with this opposition, and then I had an appointment for something else and I didn't even receive the call. So here was I sitting, laying down this weekend, thinking to myself, what is going on? Why is this happening to me? Why am I met, being met with these challenges? I'm doing the right things. I'm praying. You know, I, I, am, I am being positive. I'm helping folks. I'm doing the right things. Why is it that it's happening for everybody else but me? And I started to have this spiral of negativity, of negative thoughts, and, and there came the tears. I know somebody can relate to what I'm saying. There came the tears, and I'm starting to think things that I wouldn't even have thought to myself in so many years because you know I don't say negative things to myself that is a promise that I've upheld for a number of years to to always speak to myself in the positive that I had to catch myself and I say wait something is not right here <laughs> this is not of God and I remember like a few weeks ago when I just I was having I was under I could I could definitely say it was like a spiritual attack I was having nightmares and I just knew something was up. I knew something was up. And so I started to pray because I know whenever I start to face situations where I'm, I'm being overwhelmed by 
by negative thoughts or overwhelmed by negativity. I, I, I started to pray because I know that's not of God. And as I'm laying there, I'm saying to myself, God, this is not you. God, you promised me I was blessed. God, God you told me I'm blessed. You told me that your plans work for my good. Why is this happening to me? And I had to say, you know what? Okay, do you trust? Like I didn't even say it. Like the voice came to me. Like, do you trust God? Because if you trust God, then you know that his plans are working for our good. It may not feel like it, but it's working for our good. And I turned the music on and I'm listening there to a song came on, Pandora. And I forget who the artist is, but he started to say, you know, something along the lines of how many of us have tried for something and it didn't work out. And you know that you're doing the right things. You know that your heart is in the right place. You know that you're going after God's will, but it didn't work out. And it's so heartbreaking. And he said, you know, he's just standing there in the kitchen and he's thinking about all these things that are going on. And then these, the words just came to him, Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. And I'm thinking to myself, like, what? <laughs> You're thinking about your challenges and the words that come to you is, Lord, you are, you are good. And then I started to just listen a little bit more. And I'm like, man, God, you are good. You are good. There's so many things that are happening outside of our control at this moment. There's so many things that are happening around us, seen and unseen. Yet here I am, safe, in a warm place, with food to eat. I've got a, an official, official job, right? I've got a, a paycheck. Where that's not the experience for so many. So even though I may not have gotten into this graduate program that I applied to, or even though I may have missed the appointment, Lord, you are good. You could be saving me from something that I don't even know I'm up against. And I started to listen some more to the song. And you know what? I just got up. I got up and prayed. And in the midst of praying, I remember Battlefield of the Mind. And I've been spending a lot of this weekend just, just really praying and zeroing and thinking. And, you know, this podcast, I've been wanting to do this for a while because last week, a friend of mine, I, you know, I didn't hear from her for like a, you know, a day or so because we speak often. And I said, hey, boo, what's going on? And she said that, you know, she's just been under some negativity. And, you know, I sent her a prayer and, and, and encouraged her through the word. And then shortly after that, I got met with my own negativity. And I'm like, man, the devil is out here rampant, you know. So I'm watching the service yesterday. Pastor Creflo started to talk about the plots of the enemy, that the devil comes to rob, kill, steal, and destroy. And that when we remember that, when opposition comes, we know when we can recognize, aha, the enemy is trying to get me here. You can recognize the distraction. You can recognize the negativity. Remember when I, I spoke about being in a job and it feels like or the boss your manager or whomever, how, whatever title you give to them, it feels like you're against, they're against you. And in those moments, you recognize that the enemy is trying to work through the people around you to try to get to you. We know that fear is not of God. The opposite of fear is faith. The opposite of, of evil is good. And so when you're op operating in good and you're met with evil or you're operating in faith and all of a sudden there's fear, we know that something is up there. We know that darkness opposes light. And when we can take these moments to realize instead of saying like, man, God, why is this happening to me? It's a wait. Something is up here because God promised me good. God's word said I would prosper. So anything that's going on right now is of the enemy. The enemy is trying to scare me out of my purpose. The enemy is trying to scare me out of whatever it is that God has here for me. And I come against that in the name of Jesus. So when we can recognize that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and, 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 and forces in high places. Ephesians 6 verse 12, when we can recognize that when the opposition comes, that's not God. That is not God. That is of the enemy trying to rob us of our dreams, trying to rob us of our hopes, trying to rob, rob us of our, our gifts and talents. And we have to declare the word of God against that. That was a message yesterday in service, opening our mouths to declare the word of God, opening our mouths to say, 
I am blessed. Sasha Cobb said anytime she's she's having a moment and she she hears like neck she hears those negative thoughts coming when the, when the enemy says she's not something she says I am that, and when the enemy says she is something she says I'm not that. And that is exactly how we have to open up our minds and break the negative thought, break the break whatever cycle or whatever thing is happening in the moment. We declare God's words over our lives. We declare what the scripture the scripture says about us in order to break the stinking thinking. If you find yourself asking God, why is this happening to me? It says, take a step back and discern that the enemy is trying to hinder your progress. Realize that we are filled, right? We're, we're, we're blessed. We're filled with blessings. We're gifted. And the enemy does not like that. He does not want us to fulfill the calling of God on our lives. And when we know, we know that it's hard sometimes. It gets challenging. Trust me, I know, right? But we have to be vigilant. We have to guard our thoughts. We have to guard our hearts. We have to guard our emotions. We have to look at the things that we're doing. We have to look at the, at the circles that we're keeping. Are they speaking life into us? Are we speaking life into them? Are we preparing ourselves for what God has for us? Because our gifts can take us places, but the, the character that of our hearts, the quality of our hearts, of our thoughts, or of our mind, will it keep us there? Our gifts get us through the door, but will our character keep us there? What type of character do we have? Are we posturing ourselves for greatness? Are we posturing ourselves for God's will for our lives? These are the things that we have to be mindful of. The more that we develop our relationship with God, the closer we get to God is the more opposition that comes from the enemy. And when we realize that, we don't quit. I know it feels like it's easy. It feels like, God, why bother? Why should we do this, Lord, if we're going to be met with such opposition? If it's going to hurt this much, why, God? My friends, the hardest things sometimes are the right things to do. And God promises us great peace. He promises us a wholesome life. He promises that we will prosper so as our soul prospers, that his plans for us is perfect. He made it clear in his word that the journey is not easy, but the rewards are sweet. And we should keep pressing forward to the upward calling. Count it joy when we fall into trials and and tribulation because the working of our faith produces patience, produces good character. And I want to encourage each and every one of us who are listening to my voice. I pray for you. I pray for your family. I pray for your loved ones. I pray for the, the dreams that God have whispered into your, your ear and the calling that he has on your life, that you are encouraged and I come against everything that is trying to come against you in the name of Jesus. And I pray that everything that you do prospers and everything that you touch grows abundantly. And every seed that you sow, you reap a harvest bountiful and abundant for you and yours. And that you always sow good seeds and that you always do great things not just for yourself, not just for your loved ones, but the people around you. I pray that you are blessed and always abounding in the will of God for our lives. I pray the same for myself and I encourage you to also come against anything that is coming against you in the name of Jesus because that's where the power is. That's where the power is in God's name. And when we can recognize that, man, it makes the devil mad. <laughs> It makes that we want to get up and he starts running because he know we ain't playing that. We are not playing that. We did not come to lay down and give up. No, we came to see God's will through for our lives and we're going to see it through for our lives. I told myself the other day, if I got to, if I got to crawl myself to righteousness, I'm going to do it because it's worth it. And God says, I'm worth it. And so I encourage us to keep moving forward because that's how winning is done. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Don't cave in and quit. When opposition comes, we recognize that it's just a trick of the devil to try to rob, steal, and destroy. But God's got a blessing with our names on it. So be blessed, my friends. Be blessed, my family. 
Keep going, keep going, keep going. Create new patterns for our lives and speak God's words over our lives because that is where the blessing is and that is where the power is. Love you all. Each one, reach one. See you at the top because you absolutely deserve it. Mm -hmm.